friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Ichui and I'm on a weight loss journey. If you're not new here, uh, then you have heard me talk about plateaus quite a bit, especially the last couple months, four months, because I'm in one. And I started out my vlog about seven months ago in a plateau as well. I've also released a deep dive video into plateaus, hopefully by now. And under that assumption, the idea to do a follow-up video dawned on me today, which is a week of me trying to get over my plateau using the information that I have learned thus far. So what I think is happening is that my body is working too efficiently. I think that my body is using less energy expenditure for my diet and exercise because it has gotten used to it. I think I'm no longer in a calorie deficit because our bodies adapt and my body, I think, has adapted to what I've been doing to it consistently for quite a while. Now, I am not 100% positive that's the case. I did try to get a body fat measurement, uh, not using my scale, but uh, using calipers. <laughs> and this is what happened. <laughs> so I don't think I used them correctly. Either that or they were really way too pinchy and I bought the wrong ones. But in any case, uh, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to use calipers because I obviously don't know how. But I wanted to see if maybe my body fat was decreasing and my weight was staying the same. Because that's another thing that I think we need to take into account when talking about plateaus is that it's not a scale weight that has stalled. It is a body fat percentage lost stall, if that makes sense. I don't think I said that good. It's a stall in losing body fat percentage. So that's why I was trying to use the calipers to see if, if that had actually stalled. And I don't know because I don't think I did it right. In any case, I'm working under the assumption that I am in a plateau, a body fat loss percentage plateau. So I'm going to try and shake it up a little bit. Just give my body something else to work with, try and figure out until it possibly starts running too efficiently yet again. So today is Monday, August 12th. I, for some reason, start my weeks on Monday. I think it's because the weekend is just kind of hard to account for. So Mondays is the beginning of my weeks. And I'm going to do a weekly vlog. But rather than show you guys like my day, all the things I'm doing, and shove it all into one thing, it is just literally going to be my exercises and my meals. And I'm not going to show you guys my coffee because I cannot think of more ways to show that coffee. It is literally a coffee pot full of coffee, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, one third cup of coconut milk, and two teaspoons of white sugar, which equals out to be 161 calories with 14 carbs, 12 grams of fat and one gram of protein. So just know that will always be the case unless I'm dying. So here's the plan. You guys already saw my exercise for this morning. If you've been watching for a while, you know that I have changed it slightly. Normally I have the row machine, which I do for 300 rows, the treadmill where I walk anywhere between 3.2 to 3.4 speed on a zero incline. And then that's it for Monday. Uh, I have switched it up to doing the row machine the exact same way because it's it's brutal and I don't want to do any more. And I have it close to the highest uh, tension setting. So it's wh where it is is where it's going to stay. For the treadmill, I'm alternating between a 3.4 speed with a zero incline and a 3.2 speed with a two incline. And I alternate that every 10 minutes. Two miles doing that usually equals about 37 minutes. So it usually ends up me being like 17 minutes at a two incline at 3.2 speed. I'm now also doing my Dare Be Forever Young program on Mondays. And I'm using 10 pound dumbbells and then doing 50 crunches because I don't think any of my exercises have been targeting my abs really at all. Uh, I will occasionally throw in a plank or two, try and hold that for as long as I can. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling after the workout on that though. Those planks are brutal. So we're switching up the exercises. You'll see tomorrow what I'm doing. And for the diet, I usually try to get a pretty even line as far as carbs, protein, and fat goes at 1400 calories and as many whole foods as I possibly can. Steven's birthday was recently, so we did eat out on Saturday. There's no special occasions coming up. This week is perfect to change my diet and stick to it. My aim is for 100 grams of protein every day, and that goal is not changing. I at least want I want to be hitting that 100 grams of protein a day, but I want to reduce my carbs and I kind of want to reduce my fat a little just to kind of make my body go, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> 
Also, I'm changing my calorie count. So my calorie count is 1,400 a day. Uh, it used to be 1,200 and then I was getting my period multiple times a month. We upped it to 14 after speaking with doctors and it seemed to be working and then I got my period like this is the third time this month that I am on my period and it's not even halfway through. So if it's not going to be doing what it needs to be doing by upping that count, I'm going to drop it back down for a hot minute. So back to 1200. And since I am dropping down to 1200, I want to definitely be focusing on protein yet again, because it is satiating. It's going to help me stay full. I also don't want to neglect fiber. I do believe fiber is important. I know some people are going to argue with me on that. I'm in the camp of fiber is important. Regulate your bowels. Prebiotics are found in fiber and prebiotics works in a synergistic effect with probiotics, which I'm not cutting out any probiotics. So I want that. <laughs> I want that happening. Also, it's full of nutrients. So I'm going to be sneaking in spinach and all that stuff. It's not going to be a, you know, only meat diet, but it is going to be mainly meat. And I'm going to be making sure I switch up my meat types because not every meat has the same nutrients. It doesn't have all the nutrients you need in chicken. It doesn't have all the nutrients you need in red meat. And it doesn't have all the nutrients you need in fatty fish oils. Fish oil foods like salmon and tuna. So I want to make sure I'm switching all this stuff up throughout the week to get a good variety of nutrients. I'll be putting in some vegetables. I'll be putting in some yogurt. The main focus will be meat. So that's changing up my diet and my count. The last thing on trying to get over this plateau, I'm going to be increasing my calorie count one day out of the week. It's not a cheat day because it's in the plan. Uh, another YouTuber that I watch calls it a holiday. I love that putting a positive connotation around it. I am using increase my calories for that day for a specific reason. One is because if you are on a calorie deficit for so long, increasing your calories can be scary. And I don't want that. I don't want to think of increasing my calories as a scary thing. I want it to be a positive thing. That is something that I thought about for my lifestyle that is assisting me in my weight loss plan, my body fat percentage loss plan. <laughs> Sorry. Using the right words, is very important <laughs> and I need to get better at it because when I started my journey, it was very much about weight loss and now it is very much about body fat percentage for me. It, it is a very crucial thing that I am making sure I say that. Oh my God, this is gonna be a long vlog even though it should only be my meals and exercises. Okay, so I am having a day where I increase my calorie count to maintenance level to kind of get, what is it? It's called cycle. It's called calorie cycling and there's multiple ways to do it. This is the way I have chosen. I may need to adjust. So my exercises, my body has figured out how to do it efficiently. My calorie burning, my body has figured out how to do it efficiently. I am just going to make it question its decisions, basically. <laughs> I think this is gonna work. Fingers crossed. Uh, I, think, I think that's it, yeah? All right, wish me luck. Let's get this week started. I just want to make a couple notes before moving on to breakfast. Yesterday I went to 1450 calories. Once you get in a rhythm of getting a certain amount of calories a day, it does kind of become second nature. And so I had a hard time cutting back by 200. I know if I hadn't had the ranch and broccoli, I would have been a lot closer. Uh, the broccoli and ranch also didn't add a lot of protein. It did add a lot of fat though. Ranch is very calorically dense. So after reflecting on yesterday, I, I don't think I am going to cut my calories any further. I, I am living a lot more of an active lifestyle than I was when I was at the 1200 calorie mark. Also getting in protein at that amount of calories is a little trickier. 
And I also know that I'm feeling satiated at 1400 at this point. So I don't really want to mess with that too much. I do want to mess with the macros and my exercise routine and see if that does anything. I'm also thinking that maybe I want to make this vlog episode or experiment a couple of episodes. <laughs> Until I am firmly over the plateau, I'm going to just keep, keep you guys updated on a weekly basis as far as my food and exercise goes. And then I'll throw in other stuff along the way. So the 1200 calorie deduction, I think maybe was made out of a point of frustration because I am very sick of getting my period constantly. And I thought that had stopped and then it started back up. And so I was very frustrated and I may have been making food decisions based on emotions. And that is something I want to avoid. So we're just going to keep 1400 right now. And hopefully these little tweaks will, will, will help me with the plateau. Also, I'm kind of really looking forward to the day where I get to go up to maintenance, which should be around 1800 calories. So that'll be a nice day. Maybe I'll eat a cheesecake or something. That'd be fun. Uh, that being said, I'm really looking forward to breakfast. I'm gonna do steak and eggs and sweet potatoes with spinach. It's gonna have carbs, it's gonna have fats, and it's gonna have lots of protein. Spinach is full of vitamins and minerals, and so are sweet potatoes. So I think it's gonna be a really great breakfast. Anyway, on to cooking. Um, there is a certain side of me that goes, oh no, I'm increasing calories. 
that's scary. I don't want to increase my calories. I want to be on this restriction until I hit my goal weight. And that is a bad frame of mind to have. It is more like, look at your plan right now. It got you this far. Consistency in calories did get you where you are at. Your plan was good. Now your plan needs some tweaking. It's as simple as that. It's the same plan. We're just gonna fiddle with it. And honestly, adding a calorie increase day, not horrible, not horrible at all. Um, I also might need to look at diet breaks because diet breaks add both physiological and psychological breaks that are usually needed on a long-term fat loss plan. So this is just enhancing the plan. I think the consistency changes into consistently working on yourself, consistently finding what works, consistently making those changes where they need to happen. Okay, so I think as time goes on, I may have to make sure that I'm playing with my macros throughout the day a little bit better, ensuring that my meals are protein based and possibly stop having that huge breakfast and small dinner. It is working for me. It's making sure that I'm staying very satiated for most of the day and then around like three o'clock, I'm like, okay, let's get some dinner in. And then I get like a good fast in between those hours. But I, I am reading that smaller meals are more beneficial, but I don't know if that's true. I haven't researched it enough. And it's also been working, but I, I have also researched some things about planning your meals around certain activities or times of the day or what you're going to be doing in this time frame. And I am seeing that there are benefits to timing that out. So <laughs> for now, I'm going to focus on getting over this plateau. And then if I need to, we'll continue to consistently adjust per my goals. All right, cool. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm going to allow some time for some whatever footage that needs to be rolled roll. Ooh, interesting. Okay, cool. All right, see you guys tomorrow. So, no exercise this morning. I am not feeling great. Saturday, I will make up for it. Side note here, I need to hydrate and I want more protein and I don't know what my food is gonna be like today. I found this at the store. We had to stop at the grocery store yesterday, so <clears throat> this voice is, is not doing great. Blue Raspberry Protein 2.0. 15 grams of protein, and it is whey protein, uh, which means that it is a complete protein, so I don't have to worry about trying to find the missing protein uh, essential amino acid. What? I don't know. I'm having a hard time today. Okay. It doesn't taste great. It doesn't taste horrible. And it is 70 calories, three carbs, but zero added sugars. So I think, I don't even see alcohol sugars on it. So I don't know what the sweetness is coming from or how they made it taste like blue raspberry, but it's decent. It's 15 grams of a complete protein for 70 calories. I'm not gonna do it every day because that's not how I wanna get my protein. I wanna get it from, you know, whole foods and stuff like that. But for days like this where I need hydration and I need protein, um, yeah. I would be having a watered down Gatorade anyway. So just, just, uh, oh, I'm gonna eat what I can today. Exercise Saturday. Cool. Outside my window Is everything pale and cold Can't seem to pick up my phone it's been ringing all day long Behind these clouds I know the sun will be But today's raining So be patient with me I'll be right Somehow I must be Somewhere the sky is blue
so I want to talk to you guys a little bit after my workout while the thoughts are still fresh in my mind. I had a hard time today with it. I laid around all day yesterday because I wasn't feeling great and that is what I needed. But the thing is is that it also makes me very tired. The next day I feel a little less energetic. I didn't get my dopamine and serotonin hit in the morning like I normally do and it kind of sets the mood for the whole day. Also setting the mood for the day was, you know, scale went up and that's probably because I had more carbs than I, I normally would. I'm not opposed to carbs. I think carbs are good, especially for muscle recovery and brain function. I know other people will have their opinions on that, but that is my opinion. But also, I, I do believe in having more complex carbs, a good balanced amount, not an overabundance of carbs. And I did go overboard on them yesterday and I did have more processed foods than I normally would yesterday. So I know that's gonna affect the scale. I should see a drop, but it is demotivating to see the scale going down and then you either get sick or you're on your period and you have a day of not so great and then you see that jump up. It does help knowing that I know the trends so I know what's happening and I know it will go back down, but it still can mess with your head. <sighs> the important part is acknowledging that it kind of hurt your feelings a little bit and saying, well, that's fine. Today's a new day. I can exercise today. I feel fine to do it. I mean, I was very low energy and I was having a hard time and I did have to constantly check in with myself and be like, hey, are you not wanting to continue this exercise because it's a mental thing or a physical thing? And uh, I think I captured it where I had to get and stretch. I know I captured it actually. So I had to get off the treadmill and stretch because I felt a physical pain. And I know it's important to stop where you're at if you're feeling physical pain, reassess, and then if you can get back on it. But I also to check myself with the mental stuff. I'd say every two minutes I was saying, hey, do you want to stop right now? And then having to say, no, I don't need to stop. I want to finish my workout. I just am not in a good mood about it, which, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I can be in a bad mood about it and still do it. I'm feeling great now. I feel really great that I finished it. So it was worth it. But if I had told myself, no, I'm freaking over this and I don't want to do it anymore, uh, I also would have gotten off because <laughs> I can do it tomorrow. And I would have because I know I am used to exercising at this point. It was more of a, am I mentally pushing myself further than I wanted to be because I'm drained? And the answer was no. I, I, I did not push myself too hard. I do think it's important to push yourself, but I think checking in with yourself on days, especially after not having a great day the day before, you know, if you don't do that, it kind of is like toxic positivity and toxic goal sets. You know, we don't want, I don't want a toxic mindset around it. I want it to be a positive experience. That's how I'm going to reinforce positive habits. So if I'm doing it in spite of myself to be positive, it's, it's not it's not the way I want to go. <laughs> oh man, this vlog is supposed to be so short and just talking about a plateau, but um, I think I'm probably going to have another 30 minute vlog here just showing exercising and eating. Don't really feel that great for food today. I don't know how I ate so much yesterday, but it was most like breads is where I gravitate when I have like an upset stomach. So probably some bland chicken again. I really, really enjoyed just that air fried chicken because it was it was bland enough that it was feeling good. So I might do that this morning. We'll see. There should be footage rolling right now. So I think it's going to be a quick transition to tomorrow. increased calorie day and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about it. 
which is not the right mindset to have around food for me, who has a history with restrictive eating issues in the past. I need this day to not only get over my plateau, but to also recognize that it is a part of a healthy plan to help my body get out of homeostasis, metabolic adaptation, and that increasing your calories can help you get to your goals. I don't want to think of an increased calorie day as a negative thing or something to be scary about. I want to be thinking about a healthy lifestyle and what it includes. So I'm actually nervous, but knowing I need this day for a multitude of reasons. Um, I also haven't really thought about what my increased calorie day is going to include. I know that I am going from 1400 calories to 1800 calories because I do think that is my maintenance. I will have to find out. I think this experiment is gonna last maybe a month. So during that time, I may need to tweak that. I do know that with an increase in calories, I want to also increase my protein intake and then the other macros kind of fall where they're at. So I think on these days, I wanna go up to 125 grams of protein, I think. I also want to make sure that I'm not just going, oh, okay, I have increased calories, let's just throw processed food or whatever refined sugar, carby thing that I love to have in on that mix. I'm still on a journey. I think it's fine to have that occasionally, but I don't want my increased calorie day to be an excuse to undo some of my healthy eating habits. On the days where I do choose fast food or, or the buffet that I really like, it is because I am treating myself. Increased calorie days are not a treat yourself day for me. It is part of a plan to get me to my desired fat loss goal. Uh, that being said, I have not planned out anything about what I wanna eat today. I think we are going sailing, we are going grocery shopping, and we have to take pumpkin to the vet. So I think oatmeal, some sausage, and some eggs. Protein, complex carbs, and fat. Uh, also really proud of myself for getting in my exercises this morning. I almost forgot because it's not part of my normal routine. So yay me. <laughs> Let's get on with the day. Possible change of plans here. Uh, it's grocery day for a reason. <laughs> I have like nothing prepped for food wise. I don't have boiled eggs. I don't have enough thawed sausages. Gonna have to get a bit creative. Yeah, I'm missing a lot of staples. Should have probably gone grocery shopping yesterday. We'll figure this out. Well, it is very obvious to me that I went in there without a game plan. I knew I was, but I kind of thought that I had enough knowledge to go in without a plan and I was proven wrong. So if it was like winter, I easily would have been like, okay, let's do chili. I know that chili is something that is nutritionally and calorically dense and I would have easily chose that, but it's freaking hot and I don't want chili. So after that, I really didn't have any idea. I did choose a small cheesecake because I do want a cheesecake and my diet is more about consideration rather than restriction. I want to consider all the benefits and all that jazz before choosing. And it is a single serving, so I am not going to end up 
eating a whole bunch of it, it is going to be that serving. And if I made cheesecake at home, I could have made it probably with, you know, more single ingredient items, but there would have been more of it at home. So I think that that's a good choice. I wanted a treat kind of to celebrate me increasing my calories and making it a positive experience while also not having a whole bunch of cheesecake in the house. So I chose that for this time. Next time around, I'm gonna have to think about it more because I, I do wanna make sure that I am just deciding on foods that are nutritionally and calorically dense for my calorie increase. Uh, I'm not going to calculate it, that. I don't know. It's three spoonfuls of feta cheese. Three, three tablespoonfuls? Three, uh, these. Keeping. I'm going to say it's a thousand calories and then say I probably didn't need to eat the cheesecake to get my calorie count. Maybe should have saved that for after dinner. Now I know. It'll just be a really increased calorie day. That's fine. Yesterday I did not meet my 125 grams of protein goal. I got to 100 grams. That's supposed to be my normal calorie deficit amount, like anyway. My calorie increase day was supposed to increase all of my macros, but I think it just increased my carbs and fat. And I know why, it's because I had a very fatty piece of meat, which was planned, but I also had cheesecake, which I greatly enjoyed. Like, I really enjoyed that. It was huckleberry cheesecake. Um, never had it before. And even if it was store made, it was super good. So I'm not too hard on myself. I'm gonna count that as just kind of enjoying a calorie increase day for that day. I have a week to plan better for next Saturday. So I will do some time researching that. Okay, so let's do a quick weekly recap and wrap up before I embark on the next part of this journey. I have some notes about this week. I think I went into it ill-prepared a little bit, but also I'm glad that I just kick-started it. I know where I've gone wrong. I didn't prep foods well. I didn't think out some of my meals well, and I started falling on old habits because I've been doing it so often that my lifestyle changes and adjustments became my new norm. <laughs> so I was falling back on those old habits which not a horrible thing, those are all healthy habits, but it's not gonna get me to where I wanna be because I know that I've been stuck in a plateau for four months and that is, that's enough time to pretty much confirm you're not gonna be moving and it's not gonna resolve and it's not just fluctuations. So there is room for improvement and that is what a plateau helps us do. It helps us take some time to figure out ways to improve. So before I had some things in the fridge that needed to get eaten that I wouldn't have eaten on trying to get over the plateau, I didn't buy them this time. I did buy a cheesecake, but I'll be better prepared next week for my calorie increase day. I did stick to my new exercise routine. I did have a day off, but I also made sure I made up for it. So I'm happy about that. Really, it was just about food preparation. I don't, think, I don't really think I did anything that off plan other than going back to old new habits or new old habits with my diet. So just gonna work on that a little bit more and I'm feeling really positive. Uh, I don't think that I have broken the plateau. I am still in the same average that I was at previously. So maybe next week, Rome wasn't built in a day. 
fat loss won't be removed in a week. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, and to end off on this week, let's do a little taste test. Little banana strawberry smoothie, 120 calories, 12 grams of protein. I'm at 90 grams of protein and 1,375 calories. I am 10 off. This whole week I've been very close to my 100 gram of protein goal. So I'm not gonna beat myself up too much. I just want to work on it harder next week. Also, I do prefer to have my smoothies made at home because I can add probiotics, prebiotics, and protein. But for the calorie amount, the fact that I'm not hungry or willing to make anything right now, it's 4.30. I should have stopped eating two hours ago, but I wasn't hungry and I didn't, and this is still frozen, so it'll do. A lot of air. It's not good. I wouldn't recommend this. I, I don't like it at all. It's very sour with a chemically aftertaste, go figure. So cheers, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.